present. Uh, Professor Dr. Yaqub Bulut Hujam and other respected uh, guest speakers and uh, and Najiri, uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Okay, can you hear me? Am I audible? Okay. Okay. Uh, with your permission, I'll start the presentation. Uh, so, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, the establishment of uh, uh, institutions in the Ottoman Empire in the protection of the consumers in a lesson for, for the present time. Uh, I'll go uh, with the slides. Before I, I'd like to uh, highlight uh, the main topics which I'll cover. So I'll go with the historical background, uh, then the financial institutions, then the ethical and charitable institutions, uh, then consumer protection, which is one of the main subject of um, our uh, paper, and then listen, learn for, for the, for the, for the uh, present world, and then finding and recommendation. So if I go uh, any, uh, with, with, with the main idea, what we, what we will cover. So uh, our focus in this research paper uh, is on the establishment of different uh, institutions, which will cover financial and religious institutions development and their benefits and protections for the consumers. Uh, uh, we will see the combination of our religious and financial institutions in the Ottoman Empire and will evaluate how we can implement those trades and strategies to achieve economic progress in today's world with great harmony. The Ahilic uh, Leading Guild system, uh, cash work of model, Timar system, and Isham system, etc., are, you know, uh, of the Ottoman Ottomans contributed significantly to the uplifting of the society uh, during the Ottoman Empire. Uh, institutions and the effective functionings were responsible uh, for economic development and socio-economic balance, which is very important. Uh, in this paper, we, you know, we compare traditional and modern consumer protection measures, as well as characteristics in measures uh, by the Ottoman consumer protection system that can be applied to modern consumer protection. Uh, we have in, uh, so uh, we need the lesson, uh, the most important lesson learned, the importance of the instilling of you know, a spirit of brotherhood among consumers and producers, as well as shifting our focus for from maximizing our individualistic benefit to maximizing society and the planet's benefit. In order to achieve this uh, efficiently, the Ottomans encouraged collaboration between the three parties involved. So the first one was consumers, the second was the, the suppliers, and the third was the government itself. Uh, historically, if we see, uh, you know, the Ottomans were uh, dominating the Black Sea, the Aegean Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, the Caspian Sea, and the Rich Sea area. So this is, you know, a huge area which they were covering. And after, you know, the, the, these uh, Seljuk Turks uh, in the 11th century in Malazgird in uh, 1071, uh, we have seen that, you know, that area of Anatolia was open to the Muslims. And uh, the Ottomans then, uh, were you know uh, were along with the two two uh, bordering uh, empires, the Persian Empire and the Byzantine Empire. So we will uh, you know in this paper we will focus on the three things in the three categories. Like the, the first one was the Gaza Rian in expansion. I'm calling it expansion from 1299 to 1585 then consolidation and then transformation. So these are the three stages of the Ottoman Rian. And I'll focus on the consolidation and transformation. I'll not call it a failure at the end. No, this was, this was not a failure, but it was expanding and they were, they were changing positively. 
Uh, so the systems or the institutions developed in the Ottoman Empire was the Ahilik system or the Ohua, which was transformed to the Gil system then. Then we have Hizba system, we have Isham, Malikani system, Timar system, Irtizam, like the Igri tax collection system, which was you know, helping, uh, which was uh, you know, helping the, 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 the government or the armies. And then banking system, and then the Ottomans public debt administration, and then the Tanzimat reforms at the end. So we will go one by one, but I want to see, you know, the overall picture of the uh, consumer protection if we compare it with the new world now and the Ottomans. So we can see that, you know, from the uh, uh, Professor Cargill 2011 uh, research, we can see that, you know, in today's organization of industries and commerce, but at that time, uh, the, the Ottomans were solving the uh, common issues of uh, the industrialist and tradesmen through the Ahilic system. So there was a solution for that. And workers and employees syndicates nowadays, and it was regulated in the Ottomans, uh, in the relationship of the workers and employees in the Ahilic system. Uh, comp competition board these days and also uh, we have an ahelic system how to prevent the monopolies and commodities and service standards institutions these days but at that time we have uh, hisba in the qadi system who were inspecting the qualities and uh, inequalities of the commodities and services then consumer protection institutions and there were an ahelic system of proper consumer rights protection uh, the Uhua of guild system if we see uh, in, in the paper, but uh, I want to see the, the, the total quality management system through the uh, AHI system or the AHILIC system. So the total quality management system or concept supports the teamwork rather than the work of the individual alone and improves the system as a whole as it improves the workers within the system. So this was, you know, some 500 or 600 years back, but nowadays we have different you know, institutions, different, different uh, any methodologies to adopt those things. A helix system in a, is a system which is capable of making up the infrastructure of the total uh, quality management concept or even going a little bit further. So a helix system, which is a human center uh, with its activities arranged for humans and it is a system which does not permit humans to be viewed as its tools. So this is a, you know, uh, if we see from the, uh, the altruistic uh, approach, so it's totally different than the, uh, you know, the, the, the capitalist approach. Yes, the, the Hizba system we, uh, uh, in detail, uh, discussed in the paper, but it is one of the most important, you know, uh, system where there is a inspector uh, of the marketplace which is called Mohtasib, and he is responsible to uh, see the check and balance in the commercial zone. Uh, one of the this is one of the most important duties was you know to check the accuracy of weight and measures at the market. So uh, this was one of the institutions which was really uh, uh, it really helped to provide all these uh, you know, uh, traits like the good price good quality and uh, all other trades uh, during the deals. Uh, I, I, I did not discuss about the Zavia, but that is also linked with the Halic system. So in the paper, I'll discuss. The protection of consumer and ensuring the, their rights are achieved, which includes the following. Number one is setting standards of products and services in his system, as well as their production processes testing final products quality to ensure they meet the standards and inspecting of weights, scale, and sales practices to ensure that there is no deception or fraud. Monitoring uh, market prices to ensure they comply with the set uh, limits. Inspecting production tools 
and procedures as well as raw materials qualities. Testing the qualification of the producers and services providers to ensure that they are qualified enough to do the needed job. And then monitoring the market to make sure that no stock uh, stock pilling ya yeah, ihtikar uh, is you know if in practice uh, in that market uh, enforcing the laws and punishing the violators based on the evidences so this system of saza and jaza or the reward and punishment was, was there agriculture based you know uh, tax collection systems imar mali exam system but i'll not talk about it here i'll go for the exam system which is a game changer instrument uh, if you see you know uh, the state or the government authorities were setting aside an asset that was generating a predict predictable annual revenue stream and uh, these assets were owned and managed by the government which only devolves a small percentage of its annual revenue to exam securitization so this was a game changer at that time when they needed money they issued as harm or same the people get the funds and you know, finance their projects or finance their army at that time it was one of the innovative product at that time and nowadays if we see the uh, uh, the modern uh, is harm in our time is sukuk or perpetual sukuk or per perpetual bonds so we can say that this concept of uh, sukuk was taken from isham uh, uh, which was you know innovative at that time nobody thought about it so uh, you know uh, professor uh, uh, murad talked about it murad chizalchi talked about it in detail in some papers but some of the significant things which he has mentioned that uh, isham was something like it, it has no riba or sud or, or interest and there was no risk shifting but risk sharing and there was capability to move the society to al ghazali and shatibi optimum of maqasid al sharia so these days we can come up with the uh, any uh, isham with 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 the kind of like sukuk or different things to get funds uh then banking system uh, uh it is discussed in detail in the paper but i'll talk about it that in 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 1888 the ottomans established bank by the state in zirat bankasi from finance to finance agriculture which was based on murabaha system to support the support the farmers in the beginning of the 20th century cash waqf capital become waqf bank or foundation bank uh, uh, before the first world war then charitable institution work which was innovative at that time there was normal work in the uh, work of in the abbasi time but that you know that was only for the properties but cash work of in the ottomans uh, were unique in a sense that cash was as a capital so cash was a capital and it was used in different islamic modes to generate revenues and that revenues were utilized for basic necessities of the public ahmed bulut in one of his paper he's talking about it that waqf types operating in the ottoman empire was the cash waqfs which hold cash money as capital the cash waqfs operated in capital with various islamic finance methods revenues obtained from various investments were used for the purpose of waqf in the cash waqfs met the vital necessities of society pertaining to education and religion in the period they were active in the ottoman empire another function of these waqf was to operate as a micro credit mechanism at that time to give financing to the uh, the people in the society with their farmers or with their uh, the small the uh, merchants and then uh, the the ottoman public debt administration the opda became a vast 
an essential independent bureaucracy within the Ottoman bureaucracy run by the creditors and its go governing councils. It was packed with European government officials, including one representative, each from British, French, German, Austrian, Austrian, Austrian Italian, Dutch, and the Ottoman creditors, and one representative from the Ottoman state. <clears throat> so this was also one of the significant institutions. Uh, one of my favorite uh, thing is the Tahrir Deftarlari system. Yani, uh, if we see, the Tahrir Daftarlari system was vital to the financial administration of those lands and were, and were used for a variety of purposes. They served as an official register to establish legal claims, to land, to assist the empire expected tax revenues, and to appropriate some of the revenues to the military and administrative officials as remuneration for their services. So the Mufassal Daftars, uh, was just like similar to the uh, English Doomsday Book, but you know, uh, it was more in details. Like the Mufassal Daftars, the Mufassal Daftars were more in details and uh, wider in special uh, and uh, temporal coverage. The Mufassal Daftars contain such details, information about taxpayers and the economic activities in the Ottoman towns and villages that it is difficult to imagine research on Ottoman history of the 15th and 16th centuries that does not uh, uh, in some way rely on the information. So the Tahrir Daftars are the gold mines of research for the historians of the Middle East and Eastern Europe, providing rich detailed information about the names, numbers, and composition of tax paying inhabitants and the amount of taxes due from productive resources in economic activities. Tanzimat, uh, you know, the last thing I have, I'll just, I have I've talked about it in detail in the paper, so I'm not going to that. Uh, new revenue, uh, you know, for ge generating money. Any you know, new aspects of revenue? Not, you know, the first thing, like you know, the pil the pilgrims. To Mecca also give rise every year to one of the largest payments in uh, uh, specially flown within the Ottoman Empire. So this was not like a revenue generation, but a flow of capital in the Ottoman Empire. You know, from 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 uh, Egypt, from Misr to Hejaz, and from the Balkans to Hejaz. So it was like a flow of capital which was generating more money and employment. And then uh, forestry was also considered as a source of revenue uh, by uh, any illustrated by um, any one of the scholar in 2012 in his paper that you know uh, any forestry was also used as a source of revenue. Uh, a few slides. Uh, any consumer protection in the Ottomans? So, Kanun Nami Ehtisabi Bursa. The basic elements of the consumer protections were the approval of the regulation by the royal decree, awareness of the masses and monitoring of the system, which I have discussed, and implementation like reward and punishment system. Dr. Sa, uh, only uh, four minutes. Okay, sir, I'm concluding. I'm concluding. So consumer protection in the Ottoman era practices were in the first consumer protection, first standard regulation and first environmental protection law in the history was uh, any, uh, produced at that time. Uh, developed between the year 1502 to 1507 by Maulana uh, uh, Yaraluja Mahiuddin based on the order of Sultan Bayezid II. Uh, which was following the ahlic, ahlic principles in the products and services quality uh, assurance, not just control. It was covering all stages of production and sale from raw material till after sales, use of the product brands, the metal products to sustain quality of the products, narh, narh, which is pricing based on justice for producers and consumers, uh, market monitoring by muhtasib, Penalties applied by Mohtasib, but based on judge approval. 
uh, penalties varied from defaming the producers and closing uh, his shops up to physical punishment. Uh, and then uh, uh, faulty products were uh, immediately in preventing of preventing of the ihtikar. Uh, NAR, which I've discussed uh, here, I'll just, I, I have talked about it in detail uh, in the paper and then ihtisaf functions on Hizba system, I've talked about, which is, you know, any price and quality control, no exploitation for the consumers, no hoarding or ihtikar of the edibles, enabling the farmers by introducing system of agriculture test tax farming, uh, uh, enabling and empowering the small merchants by giving funds away Muravaha, Keshwakaf system, sharing the risk with the people, rather selling the risk, Isham system, helping the poor and needy, any no difference in Muslims and non-Muslims, we have Wakaf system or Sadaqah. Interfaith harmony in a religious tolerance of the Ottoman Empire and system of rewards and punishment. Uh, uh, listen, learn. I have discussed it in detail. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Sahafat. Uh, your presentation uh, was uh, very good, uh, especially uh, Ahilik and Tamar systems, uh, very important. Uh, in his story and nowadays. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank ben, you very much. Uh, Türkçe uh, bir iki şey ifade etmek isterim. Bilmiyorum. Uh, Let me add a few things in uh, Turkish. I'm not sure if you can listen to me via interpretation.